Hello, hello you guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to today's vlog. In this vlog, I'm going to be taking you guys behind the scenes of our entire toddler bed transition. If you are new here, a couple of weeks ago, I found two antique over 100 year old beds on Facebook Marketplace and they were matching, which was honestly a dream of mine for both of my kids to have like matching antique beds. So I decided to take on the DIY restoration process. And if you guys wanna see how I went from this to this, as well as hear a little bit more about how the toddler bed transition went with our almost two-year-old, then just keep on watching. Welcome to our garage. I've literally never filmed in here before because I don't know why I would, but I'm gonna be working on the beds in here. I was told that they are maple, but they weren't 100% sure. So I'm curious to see what's kind of underneath when I start sanding down. It almost kind of looks like there is a layer that's over top of this like middle section of wood. So I'm not sure what is going to be exposed under there and if the colors between like what's there and what is here will vary, but these are the two disassembled beds. And to refinish the wood, I'm going to be using a palm sander here. We've got all of our sandpaper here and I'll show you guys the different sheets that I picked up. And I also picked up this really fine sanding sponge to kind of go through some of these smaller cracks afterwards to just really finish everything off. And I also have this tongue oil, which I've researched and it's supposed to be really helpful to just seal the wood after you've sanded it down and not actually like change the color of it when you have that like natural wood finish. So let's see what happens. I have no idea how this is gonna go or if I'm gonna get this right, but we're gonna embark on this journey together. I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, you guys, I think I got it. Didn't even have to call my husband. For sandpaper, I have 80 grit. 120 grit and then 320 for finishing. I'm gonna start with the 120 just because it's kind of an in-between and I don't wanna go straight to 80 in the case that it comes off really quickly and I actually like damage the bed frame. So I'm gonna start with 120 and see how that goes. And if it's not doing enough, then I'll probably swap down to 80 just to get a lot of the like coating off of it. Let's start with 120 and see what kind of progress we make. So I'll show you guys what it's looking like so far. This was after the first like initial pass over. So I can kind of see that there is a lot that's lifted in this area, but in this section, it's still like pretty tricky to come off. So I have no idea how many times I'm gonna have to do this, but to get down to that color is what I'm hoping to do. Um, so I might try and do another couple of rows with just the 120, but if I'm not getting that type of color, then I might up it to the 80 grit. Okay guys, I'm so excited. Color is everything that I hoped that would be, if not better. So this is what it started out as, and this is what it's looking like now. I just needed to apply a little bit more pressure with the palm sander. I was honestly just a little bit nervous at first to like actually push down too hard, but the color that's underneath here is like a really beautiful, like oaky blonde type look, which is definitely the finish I was hoping for when it's all done versus this like almost red type of wood. I'm gonna start doing this like main section here and then show you guys what it looks like as I go. All right, here's the thing. It's gonna take me a thousand years to finish this because I'm just now starting to see the color underneath all of the veneer on this part of the bed. But this plank of wood is different from whatever is going on here. And I'm not 100% sure yet because it is starting to lift here, but it's just taking so long. And so this project is gonna be a long one. I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to get like all of this bed sanded down because I'm still gonna have like the base of it too. You guys, I was just wiping it down with this and I have discovered. Someone has literally engraved the F word on my child's toddler bed. What do you think of it? You of like the it? the progress so far. Put you down. <laughs> you like it? I like it a big bed. Yeah, you like it a big bed? Mommy's still working on it, but it'll be ready for you soon. This is where we are ending off at the end of day one of working on this project. You can see the original colors like right here and right here. I still haven't sanded all of those parts down. 
like I mentioned, this piece is just like a slab of wood to keep everything intact. So you won't actually ever see this. It's just this section here that you actually will see. So it's definitely more of like a warmer wood. I almost want to say it's like a cherry or something like that, but I do really like the color of it. And I like it a lot better than what we originally started out with, with that like red tone. I also do feel like this footage is making it look a little bit more like pinky than it does in real life. What I'm seeing looks a lot more neutral than it looks like in my viewfinder right now, but I'm really excited to finish off just like the rest of these little corners and see how it all comes together. And for reference, back there is what the other one looked like when we got started. So it's come a long way so far today. It is now day two of my, oh my gosh, literally people keep driving by and I'm so awkward. I just moved on to the footboard of bed number one. So we're still on Vivian's bed. I have not even touched the second bed yet, but today I'm actually gonna jump straight into using the 80 grit just because that was so much faster the last time I did this. It's been a couple days, but I wanna show you guys the progress I've made so far. So I just started running over the footboard with the 80 grit and it's moving a lot faster doing it that way than when I started with 120 last time. So I'm gonna go over all of this with 80 and then hopefully today have a little bit of time to start finishing up some of the like more nitty gritty sections on that piece. I also have some super cool shoes on today. This toy, 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 toy. I think you're gonna really like this one. Oval, that's an oval. It is an oval, you're right. You're gonna love this one. I've been more excited for you to get this than you have. What is Mommy doing? Let's do it. Okay, so we need to find a screwdriver next. Today is the day. We are feeling very excited and also a little bit nervous of how tonight is gonna go. I can't wait to show you guys. I didn't end up vlogging the entire process of finishing it just because it ended up taking me so much longer than I thought it would. I think it was like 10 to 12 hours in total of just sanding it myself. And I would do that during nap times or bedtimes, but because it was kind of loud, it was really tricky to actually coordinate when that was gonna happen. But it's finished, I used the palm sander, and then when that was done, I took an 80 grit sandpaper and just went in and finished all of the corners and things like that. And I did as good of a job as I could, but I do think that it looks really nice. I waffled back and forth a little bit on whether or not I was going to seal it. Now, sealing is best practice when it comes to raw wood because it helps to preserve it, prevent cracking, water damage, things like that. But the more that I thought about it, with the type of wood that this is, and I'm still not 100% sure what it is, I think it could be cherry, it could be maple, I don't really know. All I know is that whenever I would take a wet cloth to it to like wipe the sand off, the wood color would change so, so much with even like the slightest droplet of water. And watching a lot of videos of what happens when you seal the wood, I know for a fact that the wood color will change and I'm pretty sure it will change to a type of color that I don't really want the bed to be. I'm really happy with the wood color as it is right now and I just don't trust that it's not gonna change. And then I feel like I'm just gonna go back on everything that I just spent time trying to like do to get it sanded down. So because this is a piece of furniture that's not not in an area like a kitchen or a bathroom where it's going to have like high water content around it. I'm feeling good about just leaving it as the raw wood. That would be my only concern is when it comes to like liquids and stuff like that. But then I realized that the Ikea Sniglar crib, which is the one that she's in now and then Jude will be in, is also raw wood. So because we've never had an issue with it, I'm just gonna leave it as is with the raw wood bed and we're gonna get it all set up tonight. So what we need to do is when Jared gets home, we're going to cut down the slats that are going to be like underneath the the actual mattress on the bed and then we'll actually take the mattress out of the box and get all of the bed set up. Are you excited to sleep in your big girl bed tonight? Daddy, 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 daddy. Jude is excited to get your crib. And that's gonna be a whole nother process. So we have to come back for that one. So this is what their room is currently looking like before the big girl bed. So the big girl bed is gonna go over there and the crib is gonna move over here. Hi, dude. Jude is still gonna be in the guest room until we can like situate with the big girl bed and have it be something that she's comfortable staying in. But I did clear some stuff out and move some things around just to make more space in here and make the room like make more sense. This is gonna have to move out because I don't think it's gonna work when the toddler bed is there. So I don't know if I'm just gonna put it 
in this corner for now or like rotate it in and out of the playroom. But I'm just about to open up the mattress in here. I got this mattress from Simmons, which I'm pretty sure is a Canadian brand. And then this is what I have for bedding. So I got a duvet cover set from H&M Home. I really liked the little like ruffle detailing on it. I thought that was super cute. And then I also got a pillowcase from them, which I thought was really nice for the rug that I just got for their room. So I don't know if you guys remember from like nursery tour and just old videos what was in here, but it was more of like a pinky kind of rug. And this is what we just got from Ruggable. So I'm a super huge fan of their rugs because you can just throw them in the wash. And when you have kids like us, that's like a non-negotiable. We have them all over our house now. And the bedroom was one of the last places that I didn't have them. So we have that in here now. I just got the low pile rug pad. And if anything happens in here, like pee with potty training, snack spilling, any of that type of thing, we can just lift it off of this pad and throw it into the wash and then into the dryer. So we're super happy with how that turned out. Maybe he is jumping. initial room setup is complete. The bed has been jumped on multiple times, so ignore that, but I'm gonna show you guys how I've laid everything out for their shared bedroom. I feel like this is just preliminary because there's certain things and spots that I don't necessarily love yet. Like the position of the lamp is kind of awkward, but we need to put her to bed and we need to start the process now because I have no idea how long it's gonna take for her to actually fall asleep in this bed tonight. So I'm gonna show you guys what it's currently looking like. Okay, so when you come in, this would be Jude's bed over here. We have the crib first thing, and then this is what I was kind of saying with the lamp. It's just an awkward spot, but right now the outlets are here and then behind the other bed. So both of them are kind of covered unless I do something over here. So I need to figure that out, but we have Jude's future zone over here. In this middle section right now, I have some play stuff. So we have some magnet tiles and then just some other toys inside this chest. Both of these baskets were thrifted. This is like my favorite thrift find ever. And then over here we have Viv's toddler bed. So this is down here because we actually do still need to put it on the bed and kind of tuck it under. One thing that I totally forgot to get was a fitted sheet. So we're going to try and make it work with just a loose sheet tonight and wrap it really tightly, but that's her bed. We have the bookshelf over here. And then over on this side is the change table. So we left that in here as well because we'll still need that for Jude. Morning you guys, it is the next day. We're just about to all head out together to get some stuff for the house, but I wanted to update you guys on how last night went. So amazing news, she slept through the night. And I have to say, I was not hopeful about that because when we were getting everything set up and she didn't like see it fully in completion yet, she was saying Vivi stay in baby bed and then was asking for me to put her into the crib. And then she literally just sat in the crib and watched us get a lot of it set up at first. So I was like, this is not gonna work. Like she's just gonna wanna go back into the crib tonight. And I think what made the big difference between that moment and like her actually deciding that she wanted to sleep in it was that we really made it a big deal. and We like celebrated the heck out of it. He put the mattress on, he set up the bedding, he like set it up in a way that it would look really exciting for her to see it because she was just kind of seeing bits and pieces before that. And then we gave her her dinosaur pajamas like to really make it a big celebration as well And she loved those. She was very excited about it So the first time I put her in there I was very curious to see if she would be able to get down because I mentioned to you guys We added a bumper under the sheet to keep her just like from rolling off in the night But I wasn't sure if like in her brain that would be completely stopping her from getting off of the bed Or if it would just be like an obstacle for her to get over and turns out it's just an obstacle She's still very much like understands that she can get out of the bed which is fine because that's also part of the independence we want to give her with this bed um but the first time we put her in it was like two minutes later we heard her voice like at her bedroom door and she does know how to open her door so that's one thing that's on our list for today is like a door handle stopper just because for safety reasons i don't want her to be able to like 
fully get out of her room. I'm fine with her being able to get up from the bed and like play around in her room, read books or whatever, but to like leave her room in the middle of the night, not something I'm here for. But after that, we put her back into the bed and kind of just told her like, it's time to go to sleep, it's bedtime. And after that point, she stayed on the bed, but still cried for the first little bit, I think just because it was like a new spot for her. So Jared and I just kept going in and out and kind of like reinforcing that it was bedtime until eventually, I think sometime around like eight, it would have been like 8 45 or 9 um we stopped hearing her come out and i don't have a monitor in that room anymore so i was like did she sleep on the bed did she sleep on the floor i don't actually know how and where she slept all i know is that she was quiet as of like 9 p.m and then didn't make a sound again until 7 a.m this morning it was so funny because in the middle of the night when i got up to feed jude at like 2 a.m I walked out of our bedroom and at the end of the hallway I had moved the like giant box from the mattress that we got her and it was sitting at the end of the hallway and for a second in my like disoriented state I was like is that Vivian? And it was another one of those moments where it was like all right we've got to get something on this door because there is nothing more terrifying than the thought of like walking out in the middle of the night and just like seeing your toddler in the kitchen or like sitting on the couch or my sister told me when one of their kids moved to the toddler bed for the first little bit she would wake up in the middle of the night and he'd be like sitting on the chair in her room watching them so that is honestly nightmare fuel now that she's not in the crib i'm also going to attempt to do jude's naps in the crib today and hopefully that will go well because once i can get him more used to that space, I will start to attempt nighttime sleep and they will be officially sharing a room. Since we had this huge box from the mattress, I let her crawl in here with my supervision and she just went crazy in here. So pro tip, if you have a massive box in your house, instead of getting rid of it right away, let your toddler come in and just have some open-ended art time. I'm gonna stay in bed for a little bit. Okay, I can help you back into your bed. And then mommy's gonna close the door and we're just gonna have some quiet time in here, okay? I'm currently attempting my first nap time slash quiet time with the toddler bed. I can hear that it's not a nap because I heard magnet tiles being played with in there a minute ago, but that's totally fine. As long as there's like a period of rest in the day and it's like contained to that room, that is what I'm looking for. I did try to do a nap in there with Jude this afternoon, but he kind of fell asleep in the car on our way back from Home Depot, so he was not at all tired by the time that I got him down in there. It is currently Mother's Day weekend, so this evening we are heading to my mom's to have like a Mother's Day dinner with her and my sister and all of that side of the family so we're looking forward to that this afternoon i gave a little mother's day gift to myself and set up a tripod in my camera and just put it on a timer to try and shoot some photos with like myself and the kids it's so easy as a mom to never be in the photos with your family because you're always taking them of the kids or the kids and their dad but i want to be in them too i love getting family photos done but it's so expensive to do that often and i feel like i want to document more of the time with them so i just set up my camera and a bunch of them are blurry but i still think that they're really cute and I'm glad that I did it. I also know that by the time you guys see this, Mother's Day weekend will already be over. And I don't know why, but I just feel it on my heart to say that if there are any of you that are watching this video and coming out of Mother's Day weekend, you felt just like a little bit discouraged, like maybe your expectations for the weekend weren't met or you didn't really feel that valued or appreciated. I just want you to be encouraged with the fact that God sees everything that you do as a mom. He sees every early morning wake up. He sees every late night feeding. He sees every diaper changed, every meal prepared and cleaned up again. He has specifically chosen you to be the mother of your kids. Even before you were born, he knew that you were going to be the mother to these babies and he doesn't need you to be the perfect mom your family doesn't need you to be the perfect mom that has everything together all the time because that is just an illusion that does not exist god has given you everything that you need to be the mother to these kids and he is proud of you he sees you he loves you and i hope that you can just be encouraged by that this mother's day and honestly feel that with you as you go from watching this video motherhood is eternal kingdom work and you are doing some of the most important work in the world as a mom so happy mother's day you guys 
guys. I honestly love you all so much and do pray for you. I love that I have friends all across the world in this motherhood journey and I do hope that you felt really loved and celebrated this past weekend. I am going to wrap up this vlog here so I hope that you enjoyed seeing the process of my first ever DIY antique refinishing project. I'm honestly like itching to do more house projects now. I feel like I could wait a little while <laughs> before I do another antique refinish and I'm really glad that it's going to be a while before Jude needs that second bed because it was so much work but I feel like I want to keep doing more stuff in the room with like beadboard and a peg rail or something like that so stay tuned my DIY era has not completed yet but thank you guys for watching this if you enjoyed it I would love if you would consider subscribing before you head out today but until my next video I love you guys I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon